The um, irritable bowel syndrome and some of the pathophysiologic mechanisms have changed dramatically over the last, even the last year. I have a lot of slides to go through, but I, I did this on purpose because I want you to understand that there is a lot more and there will be a lot more, especially in the next 12 months. I think we've really um, hit a stride in a number of areas. I just wanted to make sure this was working. Okay, so um, irritable bowel syndrome is the most common chronic medical condition worldwide. 15 to 20% of the population in the U.S. at least suffers from irritable bowel syndrome. The cause has remained unknown, but 30% of all GI-related costs, whether they be direct or indirect uh, in, in gastroenterology, are due to irritable bowel syndrome and the costs incurred there. So this is a very important disease. However, it doesn't kill people and therefore interest in it has been lacking. And, and also we've had a difficult time trying to identify what the cause of IBS is. But we have no lack of criteria. There are actually three sets of Rome criteria, Rome 1, Rome 2, and Rome 3, and I will tell you that the only valid criteria is Rome 1, Rome 2, and 3 have never been validated, yet the expectation is for us to use Rome 3. But there's a problem with all these criteria, and that is that they are diagnoses of, of exclusion criteria. They are not based on you using these criteria in a patient that comes in with diarrhea, you don't know what's causing it, use the criteria, and they have IBS. No, you have to do your homework, you have to investigate them, you have to prove that they don't have anything else, and then apply the criteria. So still their utility is very, uh, very much directed mostly towards enrollment in research studies because they don't identify IBS in comparison to IBD, in comparison to celiac disease. They can't discriminate. Our tradition in IBS is to treat symptoms because we didn't understand the pathophysiology. So here are the symptoms, diarrhea, constipation, pain, and bloating. And so we put corks in each of these. So we will give maybe some fiber for constipation, maybe some emodium for diarrhea, some ethicone for bloating and maybe amitriptyline for pain, but those are corks. Those are just um, cover-ups for the symptoms. You can give modium to a Crohn's patient, they'll have less diarrhea. That's not the treatment for Crohn's, that's the treatment for diarrhea. So we want to really move away from this whole symptom-based approach and really look at directing it to a cause. 